there, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited to have you here with me today to show you something that I started maybe about 10 months ago. It was last December of 2020, so we were still kind of in the height of COVID, um, but I decided to get my under eye veins treated. And I wish I had taken good before pictures and I just didn't. And so I don't really have a before and an after for you, but I plan to take you through the whole experience of my first vein treatment under my eyes because I did have very heavy looking dark blue veins under my eyes and you will see them in the little movie that I made before the video. So you'll have a good idea of what they looked like. I will show you how they look after and I will tell you that having your under eye veins treated can be a process because I had actually not one but three sessions and I'm going to stop now because I really feel like it is good enough. You can still see them a little bit. I'll show you. This side, this side, really you can almost not see the vein at all, which was great. I had a big vein there and had a big vein here. This one you can see maybe a little bit, but it is so much better than it was and I hardly have to use concealer on them now. I not only had to use concealer before, but I also had to use Dermablend, which is a very intense coverage, high coverage concealer. So anyway, I will take you through the entire first session. And unfortunately, I lost the pictures of the second and third sessions because I went through my camera roll and just started clicking pictures of myself and deleting them. I, I don't know what I was thinking because I deleted some YouTube pictures that I could have used to show you. But anyway, I will take you through the entire session and show you that video of the process. And I did get a little injury under, I think it was, yes, it was under this eye. And so you will see that process and it did totally heal. And normally I like to wait till a procedure is over and then tell you any problems that happened along the way. But in this case, you will see the problem as it was happening and see a little bit my fright, I guess, about the whole process. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all the tools and tricks we can use to help make ourselves look better, fresher, younger, whether we're 30, 40, 50, or 60 plus like me, or 70 or 80, then I hope you'll subscribe. That would just be wonderful. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, that lets YouTube know that you like this video and you'd like to see more beauty related videos from me. Okay, in the next part of this video, I'll be showing you the whole process all the way through the first go round of these lasers that I had. And the second two treatments were very non-eventful. They were just really, really easy. It was just going in in about five minutes, she did it again. And uh, I ended up with this result at the end of 10 months and three treatments. And each treatment only cost about $150, which is not bad at all. And this is a YAG laser that she used, a Cutera 1064. And laser is a light treatment, very intense light treatment that actually affects different colors of veins depending upon the wavelength that they use. And in this case, it was the purple and blue under eye veins. It can be used anywhere over your face or on your spider veins, on legs, anything like that. So without further ado, here is session one of my three session under eye vein treatment. Okay, I'm about to go into my appointment. It is Friday. I've been waiting for like two weeks. I'm so excited. But these are the veins that I am wanting to have removed. There they are, or lasered or whatever they do, but you can see it there. And it is generally very dark. You can see that it is dark and it is always almost impossible for me to cover up. And I have one on this side too. I think you can see it. It doesn't bulge out like the other side, but it is a dark vein. I just happen to have veins is one of my issues. And uh, I've got some, uh, I've got some eyeshadow under that eye. Let me try to remove that. And I'm glad they're going to be using alcohol or something on me because I just kind of scrubbed off my makeup with my spit, which is kind of gross. But anyway, there's that vein. You can see it right there, big blue vein. And there's that vein. So anyway, I am so happy that apparently their laser can take care of it. And I will check in after the procedure. And if the technician will allow me to share the information with you or to speak on camera, I will do an interview with her too. Here is Jennifer and she's my wonderful esthetician. We are both in the time of COVID, obviously, <laughs> so we're being safe here. But tell me what you're going to be doing today. So I am going to be treating the vascular lesions under your eye or better known as blood vessels. Yes. I'm going to be using the Cutera 1064 wavelength and uh -huh. it's a wavelength that can treat vascular lesions anywhere in your body from head to toe, whether it's spider veins on your legs, cheery angiomas anywhere in your body, wow. uh, broken, small broken facial capillaries, 
to kind of the larger vessels, the bluish vessels that we'll be treating under your eye today. Great. Yeah. What's the downtime with this? What's the healing like? You know, uh, you could have a bit of a bruise, and so it just kind of depends on your healing time. Um, it could be there a few days. It could be there for a couple of weeks. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. Anything I should do in terms of aftercare? Uh, I just don't want you to overheat your body the rest of today. Um, no heavy exercise. Don't like open an oven door or put your face over a boiling pot, anything like that. Um, no hot, hot shower, no sauna, anything like that. I just want you to keep your face cool and just be gentle with your face when cleansing it. This is just a little witch hazel. Right. And I'll have you, I'm going to have you look up for me. Get under your eye there. Perfect. Remove all that makeup. Yeah. put those on, I'll shut this thing off. Sure. Okay. Okay. I just got out of my appointment. I'll take my mask off. And as you can see, I've got a little bump there for some reason. I don't know why. I think because the vein bumped. But anyway, there, there that is. It doesn't look bad at all, really. And there that is. Looks like a little bit of a bruise. And she did say I had a hemangioma, which is a little red dot, which I could not even see. I didn't even know I had it. She said, would you like me to get that? And I said, yes, that would be great. So I don't know where that is. She said it had turned brown. You can probably see it. And that it would flake off or, no, the body would reabsorb it. That's what she said. And I said, I didn't even know I had one of those. And she said, oh, that's because I have magnifying glasses on so I can see everything. So anyway, that's where we're at right now. And that definitely looks bumped up, but that's the way it goes. I will check in with you later. Oh, by the way, I need to tell you about the pain level. I would say... It definitely hurts worse than Botox. And during the procedure, she gave me some cool air that I could put on it as she was doing the zaps with the laser. And each one was a little bit painful, I have to admit, but nothing that was not manageable. So it really was not a bad procedure at all in terms of pain. And she did have me make another appointment in one month to come back in so she could look at it and see if she needed to do any of the areas again. But so far, so good. Okay, everyone, it is about 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., and I had the procedure about 12.30 this afternoon, and this is one side, and it is bumped up. It's a little swollen, but I have been continuing to use, you can see, a little bit bruised. Not really bruised, though, more just swollen. And it feels a little hard right there, but that is where that vein was. And then here on this side, you can still see the vein a little bit, but it is also a little swollen right there. And this is the area where she did the hemangioma, I think it's called. And so I've got a little bit of a brown mark there. But anyway, I always swell after something like this. So this does not concern me because I know over three or four days it will go down. But that's how it looks so far. And I did set another appointment with her just after the first of the year in about 30 days because she wanted to see it and if she needs to touch it up, if some of the vein has not dissolved or something like that, she can hit it again. And sorry, I probably was looking over here and you guys are there. Whenever I shoot on my cell phone, it is so hard to know exactly where to look. Okay, it is the next morning. It is 3.30 in the morning. I woke up early. Oh my. You know, maybe I just need about six hours of sleep, really. I do wonder, because I did read that recently, that sometimes some people truly do have a lesser need for sleep. And six hours seems to be my magic number. But anyway... <laughs> diverging. But this is it this, this morning, and it is not as swollen looking on the outside. When I just look at it, it doesn't look quite as bumped up, but when you feel it, there's a big lump where that vein was. And so that is how that is progressing. And then on this side, is there a lump on this side? I thought I felt one this morning. Well, I'm not really feeling it there this morning. But then there is that little hemangioma area. Can't say it. You know, I, I felt this morning there was the bump there. You know, there's the tiniest bump underneath there. But this bump is definitely there. And this was definitely the worst side. Good morning. It is two mornings after the Friday when I had this procedure done. Uh, I had it on Friday and it is Sunday morning at 4.30 and I just looked up a 24-hour Walgreens with COVID. There aren't too many of those things anymore, but there is one, and I'm going to travel out there and get some antibiotic ointment. Normally, when I get a little scare after a procedure, which typically happens, 
it seems like no matter what I have done, there's always a point at which I think, ooh, I'm kind of scared I did this. But anyway, I got this, which is actually, when you look at it in a mirror up close, in a magnifying mirror, it looks like a little ulceration of my skin, which is not good, and it looks a tiny bit infected. And I put some antibiotic ointment on it last night, and actually I did that ever since the treatment, and it was an old ointment that I'd had around for God knows how long, so I'm a little concerned that it wasn't good. So I'm going out to Walgreens to get a new tube. But anyway, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a little bit of an infection and it does need to heal. And so I'm a little freaked out this morning, but this time I decided that instead of getting through it and then doing a video where I tell you that I was freaked out at a certain point, I would tell you now that I'm freaked out because I do want you to know how these things go. But anyway, I, I am happy though that there doesn't appear to be the vein there. And the swelling seems to be going down from yesterday. And I don't think there's any swelling over here. And that vein is largely gone. You can see it a little bit up there, but it has gotten a lot better. This one, you really can't see. However, who knows if that's the swelling and how it will really look. Okay, this is Monday morning. I had the procedure on Friday and I still have this little owie, which is a burn. Uh, it's a laser burn. And I've been studying how to handle that and some websites say keep it moist with Vaseline. Others say use an antibiotic cream plus aloe vera gel. You can use either one of those two things with the aloe vera gel. Most of the websites say to keep it covered. So I've been using a little tiny Band-Aid on top of it and keeping it covered. And I'm sure it will be fine over time, but this is no fun to go through. I'm also going to call the doctor of the vein clinic, the MD. There's an MD who's over it all. Jennifer did the procedure. But I just want to maybe go in if he can see me and just make sure that everything's on track and I'm doing right to get that all healed. But I do like it that it doesn't seem to have the vein underneath there anymore. And this vein has gotten much less prominent. Maybe it's more prominent up there, but it can take up to a month for the vein to dissolve and go away. So, so far, so good. I guess if you consider having a little uh, sore on your face, so good. I just went to Jennifer again, and she gave me some basically Silvadine cream, which is a burn cream. And you have to use a, a couple of millimeters of it on your skin, so it doesn't look very good, but there it is. And I have to do that twice a day. So I am traveling right now, and so I will let you go, but I'll show you how this looks tonight or tomorrow morning. Good morning, it is a week since I had the under eye laser. And this side is looking pretty good in terms of not really seeing the vein. You can see it a little bit there, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. And this side, it looks like you can't see the vein. However, I do still have this little mark. And when you look at it up close, it looks a little like a blister. However, I studied burns online. I looked around and they say, although it looks like a blister, that really it is not. It is fluid under the skin that helps the skin to heal. And it is getting smaller, and I'm using this Silvadine cream, basically. That's what they used to call it, but it's a silver, it is a silver cream, SSD, this one is called. It's prescription only. And I'm supposed to put this cream on twice a day. And I've been covering it because I read on the internet everywhere that you should keep burns covered so that they um, have moisture that the skin needs to heal. So I'll just take a little bit of this Silvadine cream on a sterile Q-tip, I suppose it's sterile, at least it's a clean Q-tip. And they said to put a pretty good size, pretty good size amount on it. And so since I'm home alone this morning, I'm gonna put a very noticeable amount. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the nurse said to use this cream for two weeks and it's only been a little under one week. So I really am healing and it's going to be fine, but it's kind of a long process. Oh well. Okay, that was a look at my entire under eye vein treatment and I'm very happy with the results. In just a few moments, I will go ahead and finish off this makeup so you can see how what little bit of vein I have left covers up. And I'm also going to be showing you some great new brushes from Angie of Hot and Flashy and they're fabulous. And also I will use my BK Beauty brushes uh, in part for my face that I've already had because they are wonderful. If you need brushes, I cannot recommend these brushes highly enough. 
all of her brushes are fabulous and Angie's are good too. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging, if you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 or above, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Aging is not easy in this society, but together we can do it in a beautiful way. Okay, let me go ahead and finish off this makeup. And I will say I'm a little bit greasy. I have my eyes on, I always do those first, and I have my foundation on, but that's about it. So I'm using a little of the L'Oreal Hydra Perfect Powder, and this is the BK Beauty Powder Brush, and I love this brush. It is soft and wonderful, and it just gives you a very skin-like finish to your powder application. I use this one for powder and also for also for bronzer. In fact, it looks like I'm a little bit pale right now, although we are getting into the fall and winter. I'm wearing a sweater today for the first time, like, well, I wore a sweater yesterday, and I'm so excited. I love sweater weather. I really don't like to be bare, although, you know, I do that all the way through my channel in the summer, but I'm so excited to be back into, back into sweaters again. Okay, let me find my, oh, where's my, okay, here's my bronzer. And I love this bronzer. I can hardly pull myself away from it. It's the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronzet. And I'll go ahead and just add some of that in the areas where I should be a little more tan. Well, not should be, because we all know we shouldn't be tan, but at least it will give me a little bit of a, a healthy glow. Okay, and that is a very, very natural bronzer. Can't recommend that one highly enough. Okay, let's go ahead with blush. And this is Angie's blush from her seven piece eye and blush set. Actually, it's mostly eyes, but I'll go ahead and show you how this one works. And I think the Angie kit may be sold out right now, which is great for Angie. Nobody's like Angie, she's awesome. She deserves all the success in the world. I'm so happy her brushes are sold out right now. But anyway, I'm going to be using this Sephora blush kit Micro Smooth Enchant, and I've been loving this. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful, very natural colors with a little bit of a uh, highlighter and a bronzer too. We'll go ahead and just do this. And I really like this blush brush from Angie. I wasn't sure I would because quite honestly, I love the other BK Beauty one too. But this one is a little bit sparser. It doesn't have quite so many bristles. It's a little bit narrower, and as you can see, it is shaped like a little bit of a triangle. And so what that does is it puts the blush in the middle of your cheeks and kind of fans it out on the sides. And I think it looks very, very natural. Very, very pretty. Okay, and I'll go ahead and let's see. I will use the highlighter brush from the BK Beauty set. And I've not really tried this highlighter, we'll see. Put a little bit up here. Oh, I should have done my concealer first. Ah, oh well. I'll put a little bit down here. I think that's very pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and get some concealer under these eyes because we are dealing with those under eye veins and it has been such a pleasure to do my under eye concealer since I had my veins done. It really has made all the difference. Go ahead and look in a mirror here. There we go. Put a little bit over there because I still have a little bit of an outline of that vein. And I'm going to be going ahead and using Angie's concealer brush. And as you can see, it does just, oh my, it works beautifully. Look at that. Absolutely beautifully. It is very smooth and it feels just like silk on your skin. Look how effortlessly that works. I don't know how she designed this because it just seems like it would be really tough to design a makeup brush to do this. But oh my, that is beautiful. And I love this concealer, and it was very highly recommended by Angie. And it's the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Concealer. She did a wear test of this bet between this and a lot of other concealers. And on mature skin, she said there's really nothing like this. And I agree. Ooh, I kind of went crazy heavy there. But we'll go ahead and see if it works down here. Oh my, it's still a bit heavy. There we go. My, I use too much of this, there's no doubt. Sometimes fingers are just as good as a brush. Do a little bit more up in here because I do have the black marks here. Oh, that concealer is beautiful and this brush is fabulous. And here are her other brushes, which I did use to apply my eye makeup and they're wonderful. 
And I especially liked this one, which she calls the shimmer brush, which is just designed to put a little bit right in the inner corner there. And I didn't really use that one today, but I've used it in the past and it is great. Okay, let's go ahead and put a little of this bronze it under, under the cheekbones. And again, I'll use a BK Beauty brush here, which is for the contour, I believe. That's what I use it for, and I love it. Put a little bit by the sides of the nose. Very pretty. I always like to do this too, because I'm getting those little baggy saggies under my jawline, which I hate, but it is what it is. When you're as old as I am, you're going to have a few bags and sacks. And then I do this on the neck to make it look like my chin is casting a perfect shadow. And it does really kind of make that chin look a lot more defined, which is great. Maybe a little more of this. I can tend to wear a chocolate bar. I need to be very careful to make sure that's well blended. And again, these BK Beauty brushes, they do a beautiful job of blending things very naturally. Look at that. Oh my, that's very, very pretty. You know, I feel like I want more of that, uh, more of that luminizer, what's the word? Highlighter, that's the word. Oh my, okay, and I'll use her highlight brush again, if I can find it. Oh, here it is, here's her highlighter brush. And again, this is just a BK Beauty brush, not from Angie's kit, which is good because I, I own this already and I think Angie's kit is sold out. Just do a little more of that. It's a little dangerous to use highlighter when you're my age. You know, I think sometimes it's fun though, just to have a little more glow. Okay, there we are in the face. Now I'm going to go in with my favorite lip color combination recently. Oh, this was again from the Angie kit and she tells you exactly how to use each of the brushes, which is great. I've been loving this BFF lipstick from Ulta. It's just one of their Ulta brand lipsticks. Set on. I'm missing a piece of that upper lip line. I don't know why as we age. Sometimes we lose some of the things we like. So I always have to be careful. And usually I do have to use a lip liner to kind of cover that up. It's right over here. But I'll go ahead and add this little Milani lip liner. There we go. This is the Milani understatement lip liner, which I really like because it's a very thin line. It looks very natural. And it is in the color French Rose. So there that is. And I'll go in with a little NYX Butter Gloss, and this is in the color, it's hard to see, Fortune Cookie. And this is something I repurchase again and again. These Butter Glosses by NYX are fabulous. Just a little in the middle, give those lips a little more puff. So that was a look at my under eye vein treatment. I'm very satisfied with the results, and it is the most important thing to make sure that you have a good provider if you want to do this. I think it can be very simple, very uneventful procedure, but it can also go wrong if you don't have someone with a lot of experience. So a good place to look at all these types of procedures is realself.com because there are a lot of real world people, a lot of real world before and afters and good reviews. And you can get a recommendation from a friend or do some research online in your area. Okay, now I'm in the portion of my video where I do a little positive uplifting thought for the day or something personal. And so this is just something personal. And this is a wild thing that I found yesterday. One of my sons was in town. And so I got both of my sons together and we went over to visit both sets of grandparents. One of them was my parents. And my parents don't throw anything away. And I do, I tend to throw everything away. And I just looked over, we were in their living room, and I just looked over at the top of their magazine pile, and this was here. And you may recognize, this is actually me from when I was 22 years old. Back when I met Alan, I met him, he was the audio guy, director on the One of a Kind children's TV series. We actually syndicated this nationally and on the military channel in Germany. It was a fantastic show and it was so much fun. And again, I met my husband on it. When I was 22 years old, just out of college, I was a theater major and I auditioned for this local show and it turned out to be a national show. And I did two series of 13 shows each. So we made 26 shows and it was super fun. And then I helped market the show to other markets in the US. And so here it is. And so there is the artist rendition of how I looked at 22 years old. 
And I don't know, can I do that again? I'm not sure. But anyway, there, there I am, and I was the rainbow lady, and I wore a little rainbow heart. And this is Carla the Clown, and she actually ended up getting a Tony Award on Broadway, or actually I think she was just nominated for a Tony for doing Showboat. She was wonderfully talented. And we had puppets, and we had all kinds of things in the show. But there is information about the show. And the neat thing is, their theme song. Actually, we did we did animation, we did puppets, we did songs. I tap dance on a teacup. Well, I have the videos in their VHS, which is an old tape format from literally, how many years ago is that? 22, 32, 42, 52, 62, 63, 41 years ago, I did this kid's show. And I saw the theme song here, the words from the theme song, and I thought it would make a good thought for the day for you. And I actually did sing in that show way, way long ago. I don't have a very good voice anymore. But anyway, I'm going to sing it to you and think about your life because I realize that the things that I learned in that kid's show called One of a Kind and the overall theme of that show was that each of us is unique and one of a kind and special. And it also had a lot of good information about nutrition, self-concept, feeling great about ourselves, that kind of thing. But I'll go ahead and try to sing this song for you and just think about your life. You're one of a kind. It's kind of wonderful just how amazing you are. Your body and mind are really magical. Come on and follow your star. We're all different in some ways, yet we're all the same. We're alone yet together. We're all playing the game of life. So you want to be kind to yourself and stay happy and healthy and free. Because you're one of a kind, and that's the best way to be. Ooh, that's the best way to be. Anyway, that was just a little blast from my past, and I really realized how important all of these philosophies were to me, and it's something, all of these things are things that I still try to impart to you to this day. And I will say, I did the kids' show for two years and syndicated it for another two years, had a wonderful experience, and it was one of the best times of my life because it was very creative and fun. I ended up going into local TV news reporting, but there was nothing like working on the One of a Kind Kids show. And so if I have anything I can take from this to share with you, it is each of us are unique and one of a kind and special. And instead of trying to be like everyone else, let's just be the best version of ourselves that we can be. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.